thanks uh, for the introduction. And um, I want you to uh, be aware that I'm going to record this. Uh, I'm actually already started recording this on my Zoom uh, channel. Uh, so that I can upload my talk to my YouTube channel after this. Uh, and that means that you also don't need to take notes. Um, you can just watch it uh, afterwards uh, if you like. And uh, also that means that uh, if you ask some question, uh, it's going to be recorded. And if you <laughs> don't want that, then uh, just let me know. Um, uh, so that I can either delete it or edit it out uh, afterwards. And also, that means that they don't shout or say something inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, uh, as uh, Yohan said, that uh, I and Hayato actually met in some summer school uh, in 2015, and then that was uh, the kind of start of this uh, uh, whole project for me. And uh, I want to talk today, uh, by the way, the, the title of the talk is Quantum uh, Fourier Structure Paradigm and the Quantum uh, Fourier Hypothesis, and this kind of uh, uh, enigmatic animation will be a part of this. And uh, uh, I'll talk about this project, and then uh, secondly, the most significant outcome of the project so far, uh, which is this uh, structure alignment. And then uh, finally, I'll talk about the uh, unpublished uh, uh, hypothesis uh, which we call quantum core hypothesis. So uh, the first one, um, the basically, uh, so this is a, this part is a bit of the advertisement, uh, a bit ashamedly. Um, we recently received some uh, relatively big grant from Japanese government, and that was for five years. And the uh, name of the project is Core Structure Project. And the uh, um, ultimate goal of this uh, project is to establish a super interdisciplinary research uh, program um, to uh, do this you know, consciousness research, basically. And then uh, we'll have uh, some postdoc positions and also, uh, also summer school. Uh, potentially, maybe I, I want to collaborate with you guys to do this academy thing, potentially. Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Sounds good. So uh, that's my plan. Um, I think this you know, atmosphere here and so the people around here is really fantastic for this purpose, really. So uh, this is a 13 PIs involved in this project. And uh, uh, as you see, Hayato and uh, Steve is uh, another capital theorist. And Shigeru um, uh, and also uh, you are a phenomenologist, philosopher. And Moritz san and uh, Yamasan san is a development, and uh, uh, this uh, uh, Yamasan san and uh, Moritz san is a uh, uh, neuroimaging, and uh, Masu de Ozumi, uh, who I'm going to talk about uh, his work today, uh, is a uh, uh, so computation neuroscientist, and Moritz san and san is a uh, robotics AI people, and that's kind of related to this chat GPT and consciousness kind of issue. And then uh, san san is also working on a uh, linguistic. And uh, so far, as far as I know, you know, linguistic and also uh, consciousness study has been quite much you know, divorced. But uh, many people probably start to think about the marriage of this through the chat GPT, and uh, we are, in a sense, you know, right on time. And this is uh, a previous version of this you know, core structure grant, smaller scale, but you know, we have uh, this you know, uh, number of students and so uh, persons involved so far. So, uh, uh, the what a structure uh, wants to do several uh, to, to address several questions and so establish several uh, paradigms. One of the key questions, fundamental questions that we want to address is, of course, this question: Do we experience a blueness in the same way as you know us? Uh, you know, do I experience the same way as you, or whatever? Right? That's you know, that came up with yesterday's uh, discussion. If you are here, and. Uh, uh, my question is that can we make it scientific? Um, by scientific, there are, can be many different kind of definitions, and we can also discuss it later. Uh, but I, my uh, answer, I, I will, you know, I'll tell you later. And also another uh, related kind of question is that can we establish a gold standard for consciousness research? And by that, what I mean is that, uh, as you may. No, uh, if you go into the review paper by Tim Bain and Daniel Sess or you know, any kind of you know, review paper on the theories of consciousness available, uh, Johannes told me that you know, he and uh, Tim uh, counted number of the um, theories. And how many theories do you think you have? Thomas, Jonathan did that. Uh, Jonathan, yeah. How many theories of consciousness right now do you, have, uh, do you think you have? 
except you know minor variation like one point, IIT 1.0, 2.0, 3.0. That's just you know one. But you know just counting a distinctive theory. How many do you think? Five. Seven. Thirteen. 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 Thirty-six. You got exactly. But because he cheated, uh, he, he wants my uh, YouTube video. We uh, we are discussing. Okay. Anyway, so the problem is that you know, we don't have right now any way to actually compare these things actually. Um, and uh, there are adversarial collaboration schemes uh, that's going on by supported by technical foundation, but you know every time they try to comp uh, compare it, even you know one of the two most uh, quant quantitative theories like IIT and the global neural network space, it's so hard to come up with a prediction and also hard to come up with a uh, you know, paradigm that can test these two you know theories, and that goes for any other type of uh, you know type of other theories actually. And the reason that I, I suspect is that you know there are no gold uh, standard at the level of the Quoria side. Uh, I think you know you or somebody else uh, pointed out last uh, last uh, yesterday that uh, there are lots of theories about you know physical side, brain side, but almost zero you know mathematical theory or quantity on the Quoria side, right? And then if you are proposing a theory that tries to connect between the two. Because this side is none, you know, you can actually collapse anything into here. So I want to um, do, what I want to do is to establish this side, you know, constraint on any kind of you know, theory has to at least explain, and that's the sort of you know what, what we try to do. And then, uh, yeah, all right. So uh, the first part of all this, you know, uh, quality structure paradigm. Uh, originate from um, this idea, actually. Yoneda Lemma inspired the characterization of Korea. Yoneda Lemma, uh, I am going to explain if you don't know about it. Uh, but, um, so, uh, Hayato and Shigeru uh, are the ones that I met in 2015 and uh, you know, a summer school, and then we wrote this paper just like in four days or something after getting you know, inspired in this. And then after that, uh, we have been now. Uh, 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 proposing this more formal version, but it more to do with the introduction of the this relational approach to consciousness. Then follow that uh, with an enriched category version of the same claim. So if you are really concerned about you know whether the category theory can be just binary or continuous, then this this is a version you know uh, I think uh, I recommend. And then recently we also uh, introduced the concept of adjunction that hasn't been talked about so much in even this conference, but I think it's really important. And in fact, you know, Toby's yesterday's talk on uh, shared co uh, consciousness is probably <coughs> to do with that junction, I'm sure. We are talking about the same thing, like blueness or yardness, but not exactly the same. But it's same enough to share that experience. And you know, this also relates to the pain kind of you know, discussion yesterday. You know, I don't know exact pain that you have, but I'm pretty sure that it's not like a tickling or you know ecstasy. So that's enough, you know, for the adjunction. All right. So uh, this you know, Korean structure uh, paradigm uh, idea is that uh, we can characterize something uh, that is very difficult to uh, do through the uh, relationship. So typically, if you if you read that, you know, uh, for example, writing by the uh, Daniel Dennett and so on. Who claim that you know we can never ever do science on uh, Quoria? First thing they uh, say is that you know um, because the Quoria is an um, ineffable, right? When you try to describe my red or in my uh, purple, and then uh, all I can say is that oh, this purple is kind of similar to the uh, gray, uh, the, 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 um, you know, group uh, grape that I had uh, yesterday or something like that. And uh, no matter how, many, how much time I spend to describe this particular quail, I just can't deliver it to you with my satisfaction or your satisfaction. That's the sort of ineffability, I think. But uh, something like this happens actually across many different uh, uh, fields outside of the consciousness, actually. Like the meaning of the word, uh, that was first pointed out by uh, uh, Fernando Sochu. Uh, he said basically that the you know, meaning of the word is not something that you can actually describe by definition perfectly. 
but it's only through the relationship with the words and so when it's uh, embedded in some particular context then finally the meaning gets fixed and similar thing happens also with the, uh, you know the property of the animals or plants you know if you you can of course isolate you know all these things and then study its property but it's meaningless completely right because you know it's only you know, meaningful to characterize that in an actual eco ecosystem and also interaction with other things. And uh, even mathematics or physics, a uh, uh, black hole or infinity or something like that, is also characterized through the relationship with others. Not you know black hole you can't observe directly, but its relation with other objects uh, uh, is possible. To see, and a personality like you know you can also describe me. Like you know, the definition breadth points of now its personality, like and he's like this and or, or whatever. But also, you know, you can describe myself with you know, I, I have a friend like Hayato or you know whatever. So that's the idea. And then the, my one of my uh, biggest surprise when I encountered in the category theory is that you know there is a theorem that actually proves this, and uh, I was like. Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> Until then, you know, if I have that, that that's all solves uh, for, you know, many of the problem in uh, consciousness research actually. But uh, of course, you know, this uh, equation is super difficult to understand uh, for the uh, neuroscientist uh, and psychologist. So you know, that's impossible. But uh, I got the, you know Hayato explain me as a sort of you know idea, and that's. Definitely, you know, there, right? And the consequence or uh, 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 the consequence of this, you know, the only dilemma is that H A, which is which you can read as a sort of all the relationship between A and the other objects, and all the relationship between B and the other objects. If they are the same, then A and B has to be the same. And uh, uh, that's the sort of the uh, idea that uh, is captured by this uh, movie that we made. Um, I mean, my student actually made, um, and so you know, if you don't know, or if you just can't characterize what the A is itself, but if you have a huge number of the relationship, it just gets fixed, and that's the idea. All right, uh, but but the, I also should be uh, careful about this. So this actually works if the A and the B and the other objects are for forms category or in each category, and if they don't or uh, under some a certain kind of condition, then this also, your dilemma doesn't also work as well. So. All right, then, using this uh, idea, um, the next thing is to start doing empirical science with this, and that's the core structure alignment experiment. And uh, this is uh, done uh, most, you know, importantly, Genji Kawakita over there, he was the gun, you know. <laughs> He's, you, you are still like a research assistant before starting PhD to do this, right? <laughs> and so another uh, bachelor student, Ken, is also critically involved in this. And my uh, collaborator, Masahumi, and my postdoc, Ariel, um, did a uh, correction of the data. So the structure approach to uh, the Korea is first uh, we want to do is to identify or characterize core structure uh, of one person. Right. My red, what, what it's like in relation to other you know, experience. And then if uh, person B also has another kind of experiential structure, we can potentially you know, kind of uh, quantify the degree of alignment between them. So that's a sort of the uh, focus of the talk today. But eventually, within five years of this you know, structure program uh, project, what we want to do is above and beyond this you know, functional uh, you know, characterization, which is this mapping between this particular core structure has to come from this information structure. And in IIT terms, it's a cause-effect um, structure. If this mapping is possible, then we can also do this in a sense, you know, for the category theories, it's a commutative diagram of the Korea and the information structure. You can go from here to here to here to there, or from here to here. If that's possible, I think that's really, fun, that really fundamental change is the science of consciousness. You know, you, can, you may claim that you know, my pain cannot be shared at all to you, right this way, 
Yeah, sure. But I actually can measure your brain and uh, can determine your information structure, and then I can transplant, you know, your pain, which I don't want to do, <laughs> to my brain, and then I can experience your uh, pain, not as a sort of sympathy or empathy, directly experiencing it, right? So that's the idea. So uh, then the question is that how can we uh, obtain this order structure here, and so how can we align order structure between them? And uh, the structure of consciousness-wise, I, I first uh, introduced this estimation of this uh, structure through a massive collection of similarity rating. That's just the first step. And I'm not saying that the you know, similarity uh, ratings between Korea exhaust all the relationships. There has to be something like an inclusion or, you know, um, also the, the intensity, you know, comparison and things like that. But, you know, let's really start uh, with a very simple, you know, relationship. Uh, the paradigm-wise, it goes like this. So you sh you see the central fixation point, and then we see we show this you know, color patch uh, at the random location very briefly, 250 milliseconds. You can't expect the location and also uh, color and also angle. And then afterwards, I use a uh, report how similar it was from zero to seven. Yes. Just a question to something that you said when you said that. Uh, when you transplant this thing into your brain, you could kind of experience the same feeling you mean by actually putting electrodes into your brain. Electrode or optogenetic, maybe. Okay, so by really creating the state in your brain as well. Exactly. Right? And then, okay. Yeah. All right, uh, so far fine. And then, uh, so uh, to come back, you know, then, then we show it, really flash it, and then uh, we uh, do this, you know, rating of similarity. And uh, in reality, it looks like this. And uh, uh, you know, the point here is that some, some people might, may doubt that you know we can't experience a color in the periphery, but that's not true. You know, some philosophers said that and they claimed that, but that we, we proved that it's not true. And then that's uh, uh, publishing here. We even uh, registered the report. So uh, if you're interested, uh, please check. Anyway, so then using this. What we started to do is to distribute this uh, similarity rating across many, many people. So rating-wise, uh, for a given subject, you can't do this, you know, 10,000 trials, right? <coughs> Unless you are a masochistic or you know, <laughs> a dictator. And so what, what we do is to uh, go to the online um, platform and ask people to do this experiment randomly chosen uh, from this you know, gigantic matrix. <laughs> but we uh, employ a lot of people. This is just like 250, but it, by now, over 1,000 people have uh, kind of contributed to this. But interestingly, uh, roughly like 10, 100 or 200 uh, subjects would be enough to get a more or less reasonable result, actually. So the standard you know, uh, idea about this uh, quality alignment, you might think, is something like this. So I have a red, and I have a purple, I have a blue. And then I want to directly you know, compare your uh, red, your purple, and your blue. And then just try to you know, look at sort of similarity or correspondence or you know, measuring distance. But we claim that this is a really bad idea because you know, it's presupposed that you know, we have a kind of matching kind of label already. Mm -hmm. So instead, uh, Masafumi and also you know, Genji's idea, uh, it's not mine, was to use this you know, unsupervised al alignment kind of idea. So we derive some form of a transformation matrix so that you know my red can go there or go there or go even you know in the non-existent uh, location and then see whether that actually happens to be the same with your red or not. So that's not cheating, right? We don't have any you know information about your structure, the labels, you know, we know that we are seeing, we are shown the same set of st uh, stimuli. But we don't know whether that uh, uh, corresponds to any of the particular criteria. That's a program setting. Okay. Then, uh, in terms of mathematics, uh, you know, it's kind of interesting that uh, this is a kind of uh, mathematical consciousness uh, uh, sort of a conference, but uh, we don't get to see much of the equation so far. But here, this is a real <coughs> equation, actually. So what, what we do is to compute the distance between all the items within Korean structure one, that's D, I, J, and then subtract that with uh, any, you know, all the combination of D, K, L. 
and then uh, square it, and then multiply by this, you know, enigmatic uh, uh, matrix called a, uh, gamma, gamma IK and gamma JL. And then this uh, uh, shows that you know, it's a minimization of this, uh, you know, kind of a matrix that result in this, uh, 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 minimizing this, you know, distance uh, over this, you know, all possible uh, gamma matrix. It's very, very heavy in terms of computation, but if the uh, uh, matrix is very small, you can actually exhaustively compute all the possible you know, uh, permutations. And Genji and Masumi has looked into the literature and then found some kind of you know, very nice algorithm that does that really quickly. So that's you know, the reason why we can do it now. So just to remind you, so the rule is that without any, using any color labels, but we know the relationship between them only, and then we try alignment, and then see whether that actually match match or not. So that's the whole idea, all right? So this is a, a similarity matrix of 93 colors. And so to, to make it sort of you know fair, I removed all the labels of the 93 colors. And then this is a group six, uh, five and group six. And each group is roughly like 500 people's you know uh, similarity matrix. And then this 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 is a so-called uh, multi-dimensional scaling representation. Uh, all this you know, color similarity. So it's a 93 dots all, 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 all over. Uh, and then to try to kind of you know uh, keep the distance relationship between the points. That's similarity. And uh, as you can see from here, uh, there's some kind of you know cluster over the top left and then uh, other parts are kind of you know very messy and it looks more or the same, right? And also if you look at this you know uh, structure it looks like you know, 3D and uh, it looks kind of reasonable. Sure, okay, maybe how, how, how can we do that? And then it turns out that you know, group one to five can be almost you know, perfectly aligned from here, which is complete mess, into really reasonable kind of you know, structure alignment. And that's a sort of alignment you know, a procedure. But uh, it turns out that you know, group six, we failed completely miserably. We can't just align it. But that's actually good news because the group six is coming from a color atypical, deuteronomer. So those people are the ones uh, with online tasks we detected. The red-green discrimination is very bad. And uh, they declared that and we did some kind of online clever check, like physically, and then their uh, structure actually turns out to be not possible to align <coughs> with uh, our color structure. That serves as a very good scientific check, actually. So, if you pay attention to this, you know, um, MDS structure, actually you see that, you know, green like, you know, points are here and the red like points are here, right? But the, this uh, deuteronomy uh, people's, you know, green and orange is next to each other, and sometimes, you know, this, you know, to, to, I, I'm not, I'm color typical, so uh, I I find that this sometimes, you know, this are, uh, you know arrangement to be weird. But that, that's not, it seems, you know, uh, not weird for them, right? And as, uh, also interestingly, for them, something that is very different is something that I find it's very similar. So there is some kind of, you know, probably trade-off between uh, you know, sensitivity to one direction and not the other. So um, this is a, a before our study, like in 92, Shepard, uh, who is a big guy in psychology, uh, did uh, all these similarity experiments and found that you know, color on uh, um, Deuteronomy's uh, structure is like this. And then when I read that paper, it didn't really, I don't know how to say, it didn't make sense or I, it doesn't allow me to imagine how the color <coughs> experience is like. But this one, I, I feel like it's more possible to imagine what it's like to be color blind. It's not, you know, definitely, you know, one, one dimensional, two dimensional gray scale. It's complex on its own, but there is some kind of confusion of some kind of green and some kind of red, right? So, uh, the, the, and then the way we actually uh, characterize is uh, so-called uh, top K matching uh, metric. So if you pick one particular color, and then for the other group, after the alignment, if you pick the best uh, you know, matching part, or uh, top three, or top five, or something like that, it turns out that you know, within normal uh, you know, uh, trichromats, it's very accurately possible to align between the two structures. So 
According to this, I can be quite confident that I see the same uh, the blue as you were if you are not, you know, color blind, right? But if you are uh, uh, red, green, color uh, blind, then I, I just cannot do that. It's almost a, a, a chance performance is like a 1%, but uh, so it's much better uh, because, you know, there are some colors that actually, you know, do align, but, you know, for some, uh, in terms of structure, it's not that the, um, easy to align. It's not, you know, uh, trivial if you look at this, you know, uh, similarity matrix, actually. In terms of a similarity matrix, uh, correlation matrix uh, co coefficient between these two are like 0 0.5 and uh, 0 0.6, and this to this is 0 0.5 or so, right? Thank you. Yeah. So that standard, you know, sort of similarity analysis doesn't really, you know, distinguish the structure. And that's totally, you know, reasonable, right? It, it, because we, what we want to know is a shape, but a similarity matrix is like a kind of very simplified and stupid you know, matrix uh, you know, representation that can be confounded by many things. <coughs> All right. So the Quoria structure uh, project so far, you know that I might inspire the characterization of the Quoria, so theoretical proposal, and then we uh, try to uh, you know, implement this you know, uh, measurement online, and then we are now kind of coming to this you know, aligning on the structure without the labels. Um, that's the sort of the uh, summary so far. Uh, and then, um, before going uh, further, maybe, maybe let me go to this you know, uh, next step on the ongoing project, and then take some question at this stage, and then uh, I'll also talk about quantum Korea hypothesis afterwards. So that one uh, uh, that is actually included in this preprint paper is that I use, use of this object, <coughs> things data. That has a, uh, 1,800 objects and the 1 million people's uh, data, and that we can actually align really good as well. Uh, and then uh, we started doing the topological data analysis, and if you have any kind of you know, expertise, uh, I actually want to get uh, opinion, because we have a result, we can't interpret really well, so uh, that's something. And then aligning across the developmental stage, culture and modalities, vision language, and so on, is the next step that we plan to do. Uh, of course, you know, many claims have been made before, right? Like language determines the experience, but is it really true according to this kind of, you know, uh, paradigm? And also, um, you know, we are almost finishing this one with or without attention, how or whether we can, you know, align the structure or not. And I think it's actually much more interesting compared to the psychedelic communication, like, you know, out of the state of consciousness, which uh, was discussed also yesterday. Partly because uh, with or without attention is something that we can, you know, all do, you know, without any drugs and without any practice, and then we can just, you know, verify it really easily. But these are kind of special, you know, uh, treatment that we need to do. Yes. When you say with or without attention, just like the level of intensity of the attention you are using. Yeah. So there can be many ways of doing it. But uh, what we did was uh, to present that, that kind of color patch or something like that at the you know, diametric opposite location while you are doing the very difficult task at the center or ignoring that and then just doing that only. Some of the structure change, some like, you know, uh, uh, ro rotated letter similarity, but uh, face uh, gender uh, similarity doesn't change and things like that. Yeah. All right, and then uh, also uh, Genji is now doing something uh, with the chat GPT, and uh, if you're interested, uh, you can ask him uh, about the results. Uh, and also applying to other domains, uh, we are also um, on, uh, looking at the emotional query. So there was also some discussion last uh, uh, yesterday <laughs> that um, also originates uh, in the uh, phenomenological or gestalt psychology kind of you know, tradition saying that, that our sensation can be shared as, or as long as you know stimulus is controlled and fixed but emotion is never possible to share because it's so subjective and so, so you know uh, sub, uh, subject to interpretation and history and so on but I strongly doubt about that and we are doing some experiment like this and so, uh, the question that we also uh, uh, want to address 
in you know, one of the fundamental questions which hasn't probably properly addressed is why, why colors feel like colors? Or why, unlike taste or unlike smells or pain? And uh, this probably requires some kind of category, uh, theoretical kind of thinking, I think. You know, so far, you could stick with a set theory like, you know, idea of red to red or, you know, red to, you know, purple or something like that. But once you go to this, you know, category level, like, you know, why color, you know, color experience category is so different from taste category, you know, experience, probably you need to go into natural transformation or, you know, at least a functional level, right? So that's an uh, idea that I want to pursue. And then the gold standard challenge. So if we put this, uh, you know, the data is, all, all, I think, already online, available. And uh, I want to challenge, uh, you know, if I have, you know, uh, huge amount of money, maybe, then uh, I, I would ask, you know, each of the 36, you know, theory proposer to make any kind of prediction or explanation of why we get this. You know, uh, as far as I know, probably IIT may be able to make a little bit of explanation like this, but uh, I, I don't really know what other uh, theory would say about, you know, this kind of, you know, question. Okay. So, uh, so far, fine. Is there any question? Oh, yeah. So, so I just yeah. wanted to ask how you want to do it. So, do you want to have a quick question block? Or? Yeah. Or, yeah, or maybe if we can. It's up to you. So we have we have to finish by twenty after concluding questions. Okay. So it's quite a bit of time. But, but uh, yeah, so far is there any question? I have a question. Yeah. Kobe. Uh, so one technical question about so you said that this kind of was inspired by the United dilemma. And uh -huh. in terms of kind of what you showed, it sort of seemed more like you have two uh, maybe metric spaces, or you're trying to. I mean, I didn't see so much. Category theory, which we see more like you know, symmetric notions. Is that? Yeah, so th this is a more precisely on, on the level of the enriched category theory using the you know, uh, notion of the distance like thing um, as a similarity, and then to apply the Yonida lemma in that version. But uh, also, you know, I, I agree that uh, it's also not that we, we can't directly you know, compare. Well, we can draw the arrow of my red uh, to purple, and you know your red and your purple. So that that's not really exactly like you know Yone Dalema like concept. So it's I, I'm just saying the Yone Dalema inspired. Okay. Yeah. And, and I, by the way, I'm I'm uh, red green. Uh, I see. Uh, but uh, um, just uh, about the last kind of gold standard. Uh, so you mentioned something about chat GPT. So yeah. it's possible that kind of, uh, kind of completely, completely two different uh, you know, realization brains. Mm -hmm. So let's say one which is very human-like mm -hmm. and for evolutionary reasons, maybe or for other reasons, developed in this direction, and then like uh, this uh, right. artificial brain that right. for other evolutionary right, reasons right, actually right, right. completely different. Right. Will when you do this, you get similar experiences, right. but completely different right. architectures. So any you know, IIT, uh, GMT, whatever kind of will just. I mean, how? Where would the gold standard come so, from? So yeah, you are absolutely right that at the level of only you know functional uh, functional behavior reports, ChatGPT and also uh, you know us and also Octopus or whatever can report a similarity rating and we can align or not. That's totally fine. But what we are saying is no, that is the, the proof that I'm seeing the red as the, the GPT is seeing the red. Uh, we, we never said that. It's only within humans, within normal, and then whether we, are, we can align this or not. And so that serves as a sort of necessary condition to compare within you know, human, where you know, we can accept that they are already an experienced employer. But uh, if you go uh, beyond, like you know, different kind of creature, then as I said, you know, like IAT kind of scheme, uh, you know, we need to uh, go be between the Fourier structure to the style um, uh, neuronal structure or something like that. I'll just uh, it will probably take time, so I'll just go don't do that. But uh, you know, we need to do some kind of commutative diagram. Uh, in in my 
opinion, then we don't really know that, you know, uh, GPT to GPT's information structure to quality structure. I just don't have any kind of answer. And uh, whether there is anything we can sell, I don't know. So, just so before we go on, yeah. so how much time do you want to have to finish the talk? So, you said that the including question, 20? Yeah, we can finish 20 after, so like, do you need 10 more minutes? Maybe, uh, let's take relatively short questions, like two more yeah. or so. Uh, just one suggestion. Um, in connection with these estimates of qualia similarity right. via the um, something which it might be very well worth looking at, and in fact you may already have thought of this, uh, is looking at uh, seeing whether these are affected in the case of speakers of languages where there is a different system of color yeah, classification. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, it's probably known notoriously in Russia. Yeah. In Russian, yeah. uh, purple is yeah. actually treated as a shade yeah. of blue. And, and it would be interesting to know whether that affects yeah. the subjective estimates of yeah. quality similarity spaces. Yeah. I agree, and uh, we yeah. plan to do that. Also. Yeah, you are. Okay, yeah. thanks. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Um, so, this is really cool. Um, so, if you're treating qualia as being like via the Junaid limit, like these like free sheets, basically, mm -hmm. then that category has like a lot of additional structure also for like, folks. So you have like a lot of other things, like you have products and co-products and like common objects mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So if you looked empirically to see if like you, for example, if you have like a like product object that you would expect in this category, like a combination of two colors that like what you get in terms of like the overall similarity matrix actually aligns with like the prediction that you get from the enriched category theory as far as that like free sheet basically? That sounds excellent and I don't know what I to think. Yeah, I see. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, maybe <laughs> yeah, I mean, that last quick point question. Point. I know that maybe there were some if it's clear. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if it's so quick, but... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> quick yeah. uh, so, uh, so you know the lemma tells you that a category embeds faithfully in its category of free sheet already, okay? Uh, but the opposite is sort of not true. Hmm. So if you have a if you have two free sheet categories, so let's say like categories here are like the actual quality and their structure, and then free sheets over them are the observations you make of them, right? And so say now you find an alignment between uh, free sheet categories, like or the so that like okay, they tell me something about the quality, okay? But then, if I have two perceived categories that are isomorphic to each other, uh, doesn't mean that the two categories are isomorphic. No, of course not. So this is called. Observation equivalent, but then the underlying structures are not. What to make of this? Yeah, it's uh, and, uh, we first uh, go this multi equivalent uh, similarity, and then. Uh, more further or uh, discuss uh, uh, not for so this is our first first step mm -hmm. yeah 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 okay so then uh, let me move on and then if you can I <laughs> just have a different question yeah uh, maybe it's a good for us don't you think that your gold standard proposal which is of course a very unreasonable uh, aim is it she used because you reduce the problem of consciousness and predicting and having a predictive framework of consciousness the qualia issue, but there's also constitutive aspect, there is trade effective <coughs> consciousness. So I think that what you do here is not only passing enough of consciousness to be called a, a gold standard, except if you frame it in a specific context. But okay, maybe, maybe we can talk about it later, but uh, my short answer is that, you know, I think this is a central question, and without, uh, you know, you, if you can't address this question, then you may be end, ending up with something uh, not really directly central to consciousness. But anyway, we can discuss it later. All right, now change a, a bit of the pace. Um, shall we take a break? <laughs> One minute or maybe not. Okay. No, no, no break. I think <laughs> just like, yeah, go on. Go on. Because we have to finish, like, so we're already running late for the first talk, so we have to right. finish at 20 after. Yeah, okay. okay. So then the second part will be relatively short. Um, okay, so that's a quantum core hypothesis. Some of them, <laughs> some of you may be actually more interested in this one, uh, but it's less developed actually. So, uh, what are the ma mathematical structure of Korea? And uh, one of the things that I kind of implicitly assumed uh, in the last part of the talk is that um, each Korea uh, or color experience is definite. Um, and the definitive uh, experience uh, is usually 
and also most popularly, a uh, model in uh, psychological literature using these points in high dimensional scale, uh, you know, space. The camera is the uh, you know most uh, you know um, famous cases, right? This is a three dimensional you know, representation of this MDS um, coordinate. But uh, and this has been done for using color, sound, object, emotion, olfaction, or um, art, and taste, and smell, and so on. You know, based on similarity among these objects. But uh, if you introspect your experience, let's say like in a boundary of the vision, uh, this is sometimes you know referred or you know involved in IIT writing actually. But if you actually try to you know know where your vision stops, when you are uh, opening your eyes, you know you can kind of you use your hand and then tell ah maybe like this right. But at the moment that you don't do this, it becomes very unsure. And even worse, if you close your eyes, then is there any kind of boundary for the vision? I really can't tell, right? And also, a feeling of touch of your body. When you see this, you probably start to feel, ah, I have something. But before that, it's plausible that you may not have it at all, or very vague kind of sensation, right? Unless you have some kind of ulcer or whatever pain. But this doesn't mean that you didn't have anything before that, right? And was it there all the time? Did it change when you attend? So I, my, my part of my previous uh, you know, uh, research uh, topic was on the relationship between consciousness and attention. And it has been always a big kind of you know, uh, psychology, neuroscience kind of question. And, uh, Thinking about this, you know, all, all these uh, colors and so on as a points in space feels a bit, you know, kind of unsatisfactory. Maybe you can blur all of the colors in, uh, with a Gaussian or whatever. It's not really, you know, uh, good for me uh, for, for, for some particular reason. So the desired property of the Gaussian models, I think, is that the Gaussian can be treated as an indeterminate phenomenon. And then, uh, like, like a border of experience in the space and time, and also uh, the case of the without attention or the case of the threshold phenomena. If you show, you know, uh, very uh, something very briefly, and you definitely feel something, but you don't know what it is exactly, kind of situation. And also, um, the interaction with attention also kind of implies that the core is not a static phenomena, but you know, this point in the high dimensional space does imply that it's a snapshot of experience and it is static, right? But it's probably not. And uh, uh, multi-stability, uh, like a, a NECA cube and by binocular rivalry also implies that you know, it has to be explained in a dynamic framework. And uh, uh, as I said, you know, uh, not only attention, but uh, sensory inputs and memory uh, are definitely constitutive of you know, our conscious experience. So the upshot of this you know, hypothesis is this figure, actually. Uh, we consider Gloria as an observable and also a core of experience that we can directly experience. And that's the only thing that I have for my Gloria. And then I can interact with the world, but through the membrane or interface. Like you know, uh, I had said that uh, yesterday, that the state uh, are the kind of you know membrane or interface between my Korea to the world, and then if you think it that way, then uh, these things seems to be able to capture. You know, all three co components can be captured, and I, I'll go one by one. So first, uh, Korea as observables uh, and uh, processes uh, surrounding Korea as processes and uh, 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 states. And this observable states distinction is probably important. And then the second is that the Korea and the states are, um, interact in an, and evolve in an interaction picture of the uh, quantum theory. I, I will explain it a bit uh, later after explaining this one. And then dynamics of Korea can be also captured through uh, the framework called instruments. And that's the little equation here. And uh, Masanaro is going to talk about that you know, uh, after my you know, talk. So I, I don't go into the, the complex you know, issue of this one. I will look forward to his talk. So uh, what, what, uh, the, unlike the very, very traditional kind of attention consciousness framework, which is like you know, sensory input and the attention filters, uh, uh, relevant information, and that becomes your know, Gloria and then to, to be reported. 
the, this kind of forward kind of model has been uh, discredited by many experiments so far. And uh, I've been uh, proposing something like this. Sensory input can be attended or it gives rise to consciousness, and then part of that is reportable. reportable. But that's also still, like, you know, static. And this one, I, I feel it's much better now. And that's the proposal. So, the inspiration came from this uh, program called the Quantum Cognition. And the Quantum Cognition had started around like 95 or so. Uh, Diedrich Arts, who actually know, uh, learned to know that uh, Bob uh, Bob Cook's you know, supervisor in uh, his PhD, uh, started to do something like this, like an application of quantum theory. Uh, pro a quantum probability theory, to be more you know specific, in the uh, field outside of the physics, and then uh, other people like Atman Stocker and Phil, uh, and also uh, Andrei Krenikov uh, also started doing this kind of you know application of the quantum probability theory into psychology domain, especially, and especially the decision making and also uh, causal reasoning and things like that, where. Many people study, but you know, uh, result in a very, you know, counterintuitive or illogical finding has been uh, uh, studied by uh, Jerome Busemeyer and uh, uh, my collaborator Peter Bruza, and that book inspired lots of you know uh, interest. And then recently, uh, my also another collaborator Emmanuel also uh, and uh, Jerome wrote this uh, quite you know nice. Uh, authentic review in the annual review of psychology. So it's going with the app. And one, one of the, uh, uh, for example, an example of this quantum cognition is that, uh, the explanation of uh, uh, counterintuitive uh, uh, property of the similarity. So if I ask you if uh, China is similar to North Korea, then most likely you say, no, that's a very different country, right? But if I ask you, is North Korea similar to China? Then suddenly you feel like, ah, oh, yeah, maybe there is something similarity, right? And this has been discovered by the Nobel uh, laureate and Daniel Kahneman's collaborator, uh, Tversky, saying that you know, similarity experience uh, is actually not really commutative distance between A and B is not the same uh, from the distance B to A in general. And this is very difficult to explain with a classical, logical, you know, uh, psych physics uh, uh, framework, but a quantum uh, cognition can actually do that. And the way to do that is, uh, I'll just uh, skip uh, a bit, this kind of projection scheme. So if you, um, if you define the similarity as a sort of that, Double projected uh, lengths of uh, uh, you know the vector, and then if the two vectors are similar, you know this uh, a projected vector is very long. That means it's very similar. But if it's also now it's uh, minimum. That's a di uh, dissimilarity. And this framework in general can explain this kind of order effect. So uh, and uh, maybe I should actually change the order of this thing. But anyway. To come back this, you know, observable states and uh, uh, measurement outcomes, uh, real quantum theory has something like this. Uh, observable is uh, uh, algebra, since the algebra, and then the states are, uh, you know, you need one uh, vector in Hilbert space, and then this uh, uh, average measurement outcomes uh, is represented like this. And then quantum convention framework uses uh, response options, like, you know, saying yes or no as an uh, observable or axis. And that can be either you know orthogonal or uh, incompatible with another you know set of the bases. And because of this, you know the difference in bases in the multi-major uh, uh, space, uh, there can be you know weird uh, heuristic type you know decision happening. And then there they uh, think about mental states as a you know uh, kind of moving you know state vector. And then we get the response. And what we are uh, proposing is that the qualia itself as an observable. And that also changes all the time, depending on the you know, input and also you know, interaction with attention and so on. And that the states are uh, sensory inputs and attention uh, and other mental uh, processing that sort of you know, forms or in, uh, constrains what we actually experience. And then uh, uh, that's uh, sort of the, uh, our new framework. And then briefly, the, uh, what two, just two ways to test whether our hypothesis is actually plausible or necessary 
to involve to explain Claudia. One is this, you know, uh, uh, systematic explanation of order effects in the uh, Claudia judgment. So as I said, you know, uh, China, North Korea um, example has been, you know, involved uh, you know, lots of discussion, but you know, it's always like, you know, peculiar example, isolated example, but in the case of the color, we can um, uh, examine this in a very systematic way. And in fact, if you do this, uh, one part presenting first and then second uh, part presenting the later, we get this type of similar uh, matrix. But if you examine each pair very carefully, sometimes you, know, you do see um, uh, asymmetry and in a reliable and statistically you know, significant manner. And uh, how come this thing comes is not super easy to explain with a classical model with a little bit of the Gaussian noise, right? And we indeed, you know, try to compare the performance of the model where we uh, explain uh, that each of the color experience as a ray or subspace of the three-dimensional space versus uh, points in a three-dimensional space plus some kind of arbitrary classical explanation of asymmetry. And then it's, uh, this one is massively better in terms of uh, Bayesian information criteria and so on because we don't need much you know, parameter, extra parameter to explain this asymmetry actually. So here, uh, that's, uh, just you know, like a uh, cartoon version, initial state vector, uh, thinking about uh, first uh, orange and then a red resulting in this level of similarity. It's not that similar and then if you think about red and then orange, it's very similar. So that's the sort of the uh, mechanism to uh, explain how this in order effect comes about in the quantum convention framework. So in a sense, uh, one of the, my you know uh, goal would be like you know Genji's you know, alignment kind of experiment or you know analysis with this kind of you know um, space. That would be probably uh, necessary to think about other types of polia, which would be more influenced by the order effects uh, than the color. Second one, second me a method to test whether our uh, hypothesis is valid or not is this a violation of the very like inequality. And this is also uh, much more interesting in a sense uh, for the physicists, actually. So if the, all the mental property is like a set theory like, like you know, if, you, if I ask x and then you say yes or no at certain probability, then your probability can be described by this uh, Venn diagram, right? And then probability of you saying yes to all of the uh, three questions will be like this center. And then uh, if you ask like a probability of, you know, I, I present one stimulus like a uh, you know, single dot, that could be red or blue or cycle or triangle on the left or right in a position. And then if you like, just compute the probability that you say yes for each of the three questions, then we can get this in you know, a dense diagram. And then if I ask two questions at a time, but in three different conditions, then that becomes the test of the valuation of that inequality. Well, what I mean is that uh, if it's, you know, probability of red is like this much, like 0.7, and then probability of red and circle is this much, and the probability of red, uh, uh, red and left, probability of circle and left, you can measure three different conditions, right? Then, if you are really sticking with this classical, you know, logical kind of structure, then subtraction of these two plus, you know, addition of this has to be always like this and above zero. And if it becomes negative, then there must be something wrong in your assumption. And that's the, basically the violation of the bed like uh, inequality. And uh, in fact, if you I know, I, I was actually quite really surprised to see this because I'm not a you know, physicist. This actually happens physically in uh, you know, uh, quantum uh, effects in real life, macro uh, scale. If you use a polarizer of uh, you know, zero degree and 90 degree, they use completely blocked uh, you know, uh, photo, photo, uh, photons. But if you insert a 45 degree you know, uh, polarizer in between, not uh, before, not after, then you pass more photons here. And this never happens under this condition. And this is the bell bio, uh, you know, a violation, a form of the, the violation of bells. And again, your know, projection kind of you know, scheme can explain this. And Peter Bruza recently found that this kind of thing actually happens for perception. 
<laughs> and uh, critically, almost no, uh, as far as I know, almost no consciousness research asked two questions of one object which has more than three properties at the same time, and then in the three different conditions. So that, who, who does that? Because without any you know, theory, you don't know how to interpret it, right? So that, it's, it's really one of the very rare situations they did it, and then uh, one of the two phases indeed violated that. So if you ask trustworthy and uh, then dominant, or dominant and then intelligent, and the trustworthy and uh, then you know intelligent. If you compare this to the probability, then it just violates. And the implication is that the uh, property of the trustworthiness, dominance, and the intelligence in some way is indeterminate. The moment you make a judgment, it kind of uh, influences back into your experience, and that forms your portfolio. So that's the, our interpretation. And uh, we, we need to do more experiments like this, but you know, that's the indication. So uh, this is the last slide. Uh, so if uh, we establish this, then uh, outputs of the, uh, uh, maybe I, I'll just skip this one uh, to just get your uh, uh, feedback or question. And I'll leave it here. Thank you. Thank you. We have four minutes to go. All right. Maybe four? Oh, thank you very much. Um, I really enjoyed that. Thank you. Really, the inner psychologist. Um, I had three things, so I don't want to hold the time. Maybe then one. Yeah, well, <laughs> one very brief one is that um, there seems to be similarity between the, your view and the distinction between um, phenomenal and access consciousness. Mm. I don't know whether you picked up mm. pick that out or, or got anything to say about that, That's a, a minor thing. Um, the, you're talking about the order effects right. and making discrimination. Right. And um, this, these things have been known in psychology for very long time. Right. Even in even in psychophysical experiments right. where basically somebody's making the same decision over and over again. Right. Uh, there are sort of sequential dependencies right. and responses that right. have nothing to do with the um, whether there's something there or not. Right. Essentially with the, with the quality of themselves. So again that's a sort of a, an access process. Um, and that might have something to do with uh, criterion setting, management of the inner internal threshold where somebody is making a response or answering the question about right. whether there's something there or not. So that sort of thing could be happening mm -hmm. when you're asking somebody mm -hmm. a question like, are these two colors similar? Right. Yeah, so... And to so the, yeah. there could be an analogy between, you know, the classical way of setting Criteria right. uh, in making yes no or uh, right. judgments right. and um, I think uh, yeah quantum entanglement. So um, the question is uh, whether we can actually explain the cell, you know, all the effects or any other effects that we uh, find uh, with the classical, you know, model plus alpha, and it's plausible definitely, and especially you know. This uh, quantum effects is always, always possible if you invoke some kind of conditional probability kind of argument. Under this condition, you get this. Under this condition, you get this, and so on. It's like, for me, it's like a Ptolemaiotic kind of you know, view in the end. You, get, you have a huge number of parameters to explain everything, and if that's not going to that direction, then fewer parameters, and then we explain this effect, I'm happy with the you know, classical explanation. <coughs> However, um, it's probably going to be difficult, my guess. Uh, we, we did the uh, you know, best effort to do this you know, uh, uh, case of you know, comparison between the classical version versus quantum version, but the uh, quantum version was much better. So. Um, all right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I was wondering. I mean, when you showed this inequality, I was always thinking about the hidden variables that can be. So normally, when you have these inequalities, what you are testing is against certain hidden variables. Right. Yeah. So. Do you have any any 
what would be the hidden variable here that we are trying to... Yeah, so that, especially this part of uh, this you know, test, you know, value inequality has, has been, of course, you know, uh, you know, invokes the hidden variable kind of you know, explanation now, uh, for especially for among the physicists, right? And uh, we actually don't, uh, don't think that, you know, standard um, bell type kind of explanation will be possible because in, in psychology, you know, as you know, many things are, those are interacting, and, uh, you know, the exactly the same kind of formulation doesn't work. And if you are really strict, then you can go to this you know, framework called a contextuality by default, by Zafaro. And then, uh, I, I, under this you know, very strict condition that, you know, Peter's uh, demonstration also doesn't work, actually. Uh, but uh, there, there are potentially several cases where psychology is actually easier to demonstrate this kind of violation. Like A shares, you know, staircase and so on, like A is larger than B, B is larger than C, but C is larger than A kind of situation. Yeah? I, I'm no? sorry, we, we can't take any more questions. Yeah. Okay. Big round of applause. I think it's very